Hi, it's Paul from Model Builder International. Don't forget, subscribe button is down there, you know what to do with that. Also click on the bell, that way you'll actually get notified of things in a good time. Um, especially Kenny's live streams that he does now and again, in fact, most weeks. Um, you'll also get notified of the giveaways and further reviews and builds. Today we're going to have a look at a uh, decal sheet from Lifelike Decals. This is the last one for now. Uh, this one is uh, B25 part 4 in 1 to 70 second scale. Okay, so this is it's the last of Lifelike Decals uh, four part series of B25 decals. Um, so we'll go through see what we get in the bag. So there's obviously four options in here. This is set 72042. Um, recommended kits the Airfix B25 CD, that's for the top two, and the Hasagawa B25J, that's for the bottom two. Um, and also down here, Lifelike Decals wants to hear from you and your input. That's uh, basically a good thing about them is they're interested in what you think about their decals. Ideas, issues, problems you've had, corrections especially. Um, they've got the fax number, their email address and their web address there. So I'll just take these out the bag and we'll see what we get. So start with the instructions. First off we get a half sheet and basically this is talking about the um, the big national insignia that uh, was applied to B25s. Basically depending on when it was built and the version to a degree depends what size round rules were applied. Um, basically 45 or 50 inch round rules. Um, and there's also a bit here about uh, markings on frontline units, especially in North Africa. Um, uh, was it Chowhound changed in signia size at one point? So then we've got two sheets of single sided colour paper. Um, so we've got the cover we've already spoken about, and this one uh, basically. You've got the basically top and bottom views. Basically, it's just showing you where the where the big national insignia go on the wings, and also the propellers for options three and four, which are mostly black. And at the bottom here, we've got the ten references they've used. Um, mostly books, by the look of it. They've also uh, got, had photographs from Mr. Zodrick. Um, about the Chowhound and Chowhound Junior and somebody else was checking English captions and there's a web address there as well where they got some pictures from as well. And then to this one which is the interesting one. So basically you've got Chowhound, Chowhound Junior. So um, as you can see you've got the decals uh, shown um, if I remember correctly, you can make from this, you can make from this set, um, there's no stencils on the decals, but you can use those from the kit. Um, you can make both one and two, or just number three, or just number four. Because um, basically you'll run out of uh, stars and bars of the correct size. If you have your uh, the kit you're using, then if you use the stars and bars from there, if you want to be perfectly accurate, you can work out whether they're 45 inch or 50 inch um, decals, uh, 50 inch um, insignia and sort of work it from there as to how many you can make. But you can make a couple. Um, so, aircraft number one, Chowhound. Um, could easily be, it's one of the most famous B-25s there was. Uh, from what I've read, it started off as Tondaleo um, which uh, basically became famous when it survived. Basically, it was three B-25s um, that were unescorted. They went to attack Rabol. Um, 
and basically they ran into a whole swarm of zeros. Two of them were shot down, uh, two B-25s were shot down. Tondaleo was severely shot up. Um, took six months to repair, I think both engines, both wings were replaced. Um, all sorts of things were replaced. And when it came back, they it was basically a chair hound. It was used for runs from uh, the Philippines to Australia to, Australia to pick up um, supplies and personnel. Um, notice uh, the guns have all been removed for this one, and it's natural metal. So that was a uh, chow hound. And then on March 30th, 1945, uh, basically got lost during us in a storm, um, crashed onto a beach, uh, I think off the Philippines. Um, everybody survived, but some injuries. Um, the crew was rescued by uh, Philippine guerrillas. So basically that aircraft was no longer available. So then we move on to aircraft number two. Basically they used another one, hence Chow Hound Jr. And that one basically took over the same role um, as Chow Hound flying to Australia for supplies and personnel. Uh, in the text it gives you specific details of things uh, <coughs> such as um, anti-glare panel covers, additional armour plates, some of the uh, clear parts will need to be painted over in this one. Um, they go into a lot of detail to show exactly how to get your model uh, looking exactly how it should be looking to be um, to be accurate. Um, then moving down to number three, um, this one is from New Guinea and it shows you the references they've used. It's a little Diagram here to show you the nose gun arrangement, so you make sure you get the nose guns in exactly the right places. Um, and then the last one at the bottom, uh, my book, is uh, f again from the Philippines. Um, and then using the J kits for the bottom too, because of the up turrets. So lots of details there to help you get it right. Really interesting aircraft, favourites of these two obviously. Um, so let's have a quick look at the decals. So essentially it's three decal sheets of roughly the same size. Bottom one is the stars and bars. Um, I think this one is micro scale. The top one's micro scale, middle one's cartograph. Um, you can see there's two pairs of, of decals. Number one, that's the one you'll run out of um, for doing the, if you want to do more than one one aircraft. The backing film on this is you can't see it outside of the uh, the paint, the colour. Uh, the top one's all the small bits, um, again by micro scale. I can only see backing film um, where, thing, where it's going to hold things together. There's a bit of backing film between these lines as well, but you've got stars up here between them to hold that need to be in the right places. So, in actual fact, the only place they could have made it a bit smaller was between these dot bottom two yellow um, stripes but the rest all looks very good bright colours and the colour decals down here by Cartograph those are really quite something special especially the ones um, for Chowhound uh, slightly different colours they've used colour photographs to try and get the colours correct for the two aircraft uh, if you look at their references, they've used uh, there's some a uh, fair few colour uh, photographs in there. Um, all in all, the decals all look uh, absolutely uh, perfect. They're very nice, very nicely coloured. So all in all, um, there's some really nicely, nice brightly coloured um, B25s in here. The chair hand and natural metal finish will certainly stand out on the shelf um, and you get lots of detail from lifelike about exactly how to get your build um, perfect even down to modifications to the kit you know such as um, no uh, no armament on the top two um, so I'll put a link underneath the underneath the video for excuse me for um, uh, the lifelike decals website and you can get a get a set from there. 
Um, I've also put photographs of things on the website. There's a link for that underneath the video as well. And all that's left to say is many thanks to Lifelike Decals for sending it along for review. And I look forward to seeing what they're going to produce next. Okay. <clears throat>